All right, so we got the printer plugged in. Let's go ahead and hit the power switch. And we can see a little light lit up here. Got the Creality logo. Some fans kicked in, but it's very quiet. So here's gonna prompt us through the setup. We're gonna choose our language, click next. It's gonna confirm that we took out the three bolts that hold the build plate down. We're gonna say, okay, we took them out. So now it's asking us to make sure there's nothing inside and it's clear. We do have to agree to a privacy policy. So you can read that if you want, but there's quite a bit to read. Next part, we're gonna set up our network. So what you're gonna do is just gonna click on your network name and then enter the credentials and the printer will connect. All right, so we get a little check mark saying we're connected. Click next. So here you're gonna put in the time zone that you're in. Click next. So here we have a barcode to connect to the Creality Cloud. And if you wanna have a lot of control and just ease of use, you definitely wanna use the app. And if you go into your app store, you'll find it there and I already have it. So let's go ahead and open it up. So up here, there's a little scan. I'm gonna click on that and we're gonna scan this QR code here that's presented. So once it scans it, it's gonna find the printer and it's gonna ask us to confirm. We're gonna click on done to confirm and it's gonna add it to the list of printers that I already have here. So now we can use the app here to control the printer completely. So it's doing something here and we're gonna leave that be for now. Let's click next. So for the next part, it's gonna do some checks and processes like the input shaping, things like that. And it's gonna take about 11 minutes. So we can go ahead and start and do that. And you guys can see a list here of everything it's gonna do. So we can see we passed all these tests and now it's going to do input shaping. And then after that, out of bed low. And we can go ahead and grab this piece of foam from the packaging. So the bed does have to go up for it to come out. So when it's doing its input shaping, you don't really want to touch it or move it around as it is calculating the resonance of the whole thing. So wherever you're going to use it, that's where it should be done. All right, so the self-check is complete. We'll click OK, and it's gonna go to the main menu. So if you ever use the Creality operating system, it's quite simple. We got hot buttons here. There's a grab between the nozzle and the bed. Here we can see also the nozzle, bed, and interior temperature. And if you click on it, you can adjust it. Also, we got hot button here for the light, so you can turn that on and off. I guess we'll choose to keep it on. And fan controls there, so right now it's cooling down the nozzle. So here we have settings movement and temp and then extruder so this is how we're going to load and unload filament and the cooling we've seen and then we got files so we do have some included files and these are local we also can read a usb drive and the history and the settings you got a lot more things you can adjust quite a few things here the screen off time can be adjusted and i'm going to set mine to no settings so it doesn't turn off you can also control the brightness of the screen we'll go one maybe I'm not sure if it's better for filming or not but anyways and then we got our network there and the camera and here we have the settings that we can adjust so you can do time lapses where it makes them automatically the ai functions it is on and it's going to detect if certain things are going wrong let's say print came loose or something abnormal happened and then down here we got a little help FAQ, error history, and then you can upload your locks. So yeah, pretty basic. So I think for the next part, let's go ahead and load some filament. And we got here some Creality Hyper Filament that's made for fast printing. And we can see this is the gray. So our filaments will go here on the back and it's gonna roll out from the bottom up. We're gonna grab our snippers that are included, cut the filament on an angle and feed it through. And it's going to go around on the top here and then into the extruder. So one thing to note is make sure, I don't know if you guys can see, but your extruder lever is unlocked, which is this way. And as we push our filament through, we can kind of maybe see it go through there. And we're going to go through the extruder. And once we feel like we're in the teeth and kind of down in there, we can lock it by going that way. And so now we can click extrude and it's going to preheat the nozzle and extrude it for us. And there it goes. And so simple as that, our filament is purged. So if we go back down to the display here, we can see that it's finished. 
So if we click on files, we do have a few options to print here. I guess we should start with this 16 minute Benchy. We also have this super crazy 600 millimeters a second test. I guess we can do that. And also it looks like we have a little upgrade or relocation of our spool holder. I think on the side, but yeah, we'll check that out also. And here we also have some kind of base. In any case, let's go with this Benchy. We'll click on it and you guys can see how long it's going to take and it, the calibration is checked. We just did the calibration, but we'll go ahead and let it do it again just in case it needs it for this first print. We'll click print and it'll start and that's our printing menu. And there's not too much you can adjust here while you're printing, mostly just the temperature and the bed and the fans, but yeah. And there it goes. And it looks like the offset is perfect. Which is expected. Alright. I don't know if you guys can hear, the printer is pretty quiet. It is going pretty slow on the first layer. Well, I mean, it is quick, but not crazy quick. But I'm sure it's going to speed up here shortly after the first layer. But at these normal operating speeds, it's not loud at all. It's mostly fan that I hear. And it's a little bit of movement. And there it goes. Now it's cooking at full speed, looks like. And it's moving at incredible speeds. Alright, so in about 14 minutes or so, we're going to have a Benchy. So we printed the Benchy and the 600 millimeters a second test, which is quite fast. So the Benchy showed actually 17 minutes when it was completed and for the ultra fast print, it was nine minutes. So either way, very, very quick. So let's take a closer look at this very, very fast Benchy. So this filament that we're using is this kind of light gray and you can really see all of the details. So it might look a little worse than it actually is. It's mostly just because of the color of the filament and the shadows that are cast. But in any case, we can see we got a really smooth bottom as we have the smooth plate. There is a little brim around here. 
that comes off for the most part. And if we look at the walls here, they're pretty nice. There's something a little bit there. But still, guys, you have to consider this is a super fast print and it's quite composed looking. No stringing, great overhangs. The box looks good. The walls here look pretty good too. And the top with the chimney. So nothing really to complain about, especially at the speed. So this print here is printed at an incredible speed and you guys can see it's pretty much perfect. So it is kind of just one layer all around. That's why it can print so fast. But this just kind of shows off the capability or how fast the printer can go at, you know, maximum velocities. But yeah, you guys can see I didn't use any glue and the models seem to pop off just fine. Even though they do recommend using a little bit of glue because it'll protect your build plate. Because if the offset is not just right or something happens, you can really damage this thing easily. But for the most part on these PLA prints, it's pretty safe or at least what it appears like to just print straight on it. And our little brushes there are doing a good job of cleaning the nozzle. And I also noticed that it actually checks the height of the brush on those two ends there. Yeah, that's quite unique. But yeah, check out this pretty crazy print. We do also have a little brim. I'm not gonna take it off as it's probably gonna destroy the model here. But yeah, it's definitely interesting how fast the nozzle can go around these kind of shapes. So this is probably not, you know, anything too useful because in reality, you're actually printing infill and all that stuff. But it just shows how well the printer can be composed at these kind of speeds and the walls can still look very nice.